This first part of the Minimod Keys user guide will just cover the very basic functions. Firstly, how to patch up a voice to get sound out of it, and then the very basic controller functions. Later videos will take a more detailed look at each of the modules, and also demonstrate some of the more advanced features of the controller. But for a more in-depth guide to the Nifty Keys itself, head over to Create Audio's YouTube channel. First things first, we'll want to get the sound out of it. And as with most subtractive synthesizers, the layout follows the audio chain in a, a logical order. So starting from this module, which is also for control, but provides white, pink and red noise. The three VCOs, which then go into either the mixer or directly into the ladder filter and or the low fat high pass filter and then into the VCA. And then at the end here we have the modulation which is the the envelope generator and the lfo module first of all we'll start with a very simple three vco minimo style voice so starting with the sawtooth for the first vco into the first input on the ladder filter and then do the same for these other two sawtooths I won't cover the high pass filter in this video, I'll cover that in a later one, but starting off with the output from a low pass filter going directly into the audio input or one of the audio inputs of the VCA. And I want envelope control over both the filter frequency. So I connect that here and over the VCA. So I'll use a second envelope to control the CV of the VCA in CV1 or CV2. Ordinarily with a, a Eurac modular system you take the audio out from the VCA and go to a mixer or audio interface but there are also outputs built into the, the nifty keys itself which I'll explain in a, a later video. Now we need to get the keyboard to communicate with the synthesizer voice we just made so take cable from CV1 and connect that to the CV in on the Glide Noise module. This is the Mark II version of the module and it actually sends CV via this input down through the bus boards or bus cables to any compatible modules that will listen to it, which the VCOs will. And so it delivers the CV directly from the keyboard to the back of each VCO. And next thing we need to take the gate output and connect it to the envelope generator, which is over here. So that will trigger the envelopes whenever a key is pressed. So I've got the input levels on the ladder filter halfway at the moment. If you push them far beyond that, at least at a modular level, the signals will start to overdrive. So I want to keep them relatively clean at the moment. And the VCA has got the offset all the way up, which constantly allows sound to pass through it, irrespective of the envelope setting or keys being pressed. So if I raise the master level, we can start to hear the, the sound of the synthesizer. So if I now turn off the offset, there'll be no sound at all. And let's say all these settings were at nil. If I press a key, then I'll hear no sound at all because there's no influence coming from the, the envelope generator. But if I raise CV1, and this is the envelope for the, for the VCA. And I've also got 
this envelope connected to the filter. So if I reduce the filter frequency, then start to raise the level of that envelope. The transistor ladder filter has three audio inputs, so I can connect three audio sources, like three VCOs, into the filter at the same time. But if I wanted to add more than three, then I can use the Ring SM, which is a, a Moog CP3 based mixer, as well as a sub bass generator. So if I simply take these signals to inputs one, two, and three, and then connect the audio output of the Ring SM into the input of the filter. This will be quieter initially, so I'll have to raise the level of the input on the ladder filter. Add some more volume on the input levels of the mixer. Because the output of this is slightly lower, it means it's not such a hot signal going into the ladder filter, so I can raise the input level a bit more. But I can also add some white or pink noise to the audio signal. So what I'm going to do is take this white input and first of all just connect it to input 4 the mixer. So if I raise input 4 you should start to hear the noise. But the Ring SM also has these two sub bass generators and they use shared inputs. So if I'm connected to audio input four, it cancels out the sub oscillator that is controlled by the same pot. And the same with audio input five and the pot for sub bass five. So one way I can get around this is by just taking this audio into the one of the spare two inputs on the filter. What that does is freeze up the two sub bass generators. I can use one of these sawtooths for this task, but a triangle gets better results. But what this will do is if I feed a triangle from its lowest of the three VCOs, it can be any of them, but I want to set these sub octaves below below the pitch of the synth itself. So now what this, what this will do is it will generate sub bases from this first VCO. and then sub minus two.
that's the VCO that it's generating the, the sub bases from. Add the other two. The Minimod keys also comes with a very advanced LFO module, the Tap Tempo Voltage Controlled LFO. There's a full user guide video on the YouTube channel about this, just to show what it's capable of and its features. But just to use it in its most simple form, we're going to take an output from the bipolar output. And this actually has its own attenuator, so I can connect it anywhere here. Just to give an example, I'm going to connect it to the one volt Proctave input the ladder filter which obviously because it's one volt proctave it doesn't have an attenuator to control the level of modulation coming in but I can do that from from here so if I take the envelope down on the filter and play a note and I can add some of this LFO to the filter frequency Sounds particularly nice with some resonance. There'll be patch videos coming in the future showing you some of the things you can do with this voice, including more advanced ways of using the Tap Tempo LFO. So, the most obvious features on the keyboard are pitch bend. range can be changed between a, a full octave and the two semitones. The mod wheel has its own output up here which can be assigned to different things so you could use this to control filter frequency for example. This output is also used for the key's inbuilt LFO. So if I press this function button once and select LFO, which is marked on the silk screen on the top of the keyboard. Now this is functioning as a, an LFO level controller. And the rate controls the rate. And to change the LFO back into just normal mod wheel function, just press the function button and manual. There's also glide. It's controlled by this spot here. And of course, there's glide on the glide and noise module. And this can be selected between glide up only or 
glide down only. There's pitch transpose using the octo switch. This can be extended further, a semitone at a time, up or down using the transpose function. So, it's one note. Hit the switch, minus one, function again, and take it up a couple. At the moment, the keys is in its default state, so this should be what it's like when you turn it on. In which case, it will be in single voice mode, and there'll be a video covering the different voicing modes later. But in the single voice mode, each of these pairs of outputs just mirrors what is coming out of the first input. So if you needed another gate input to say trigger the clock on the tap tempo LFO, or if you want to send the keyboard CV to anything else, you can do that. But another feature that's designed into the glide noise module is the CV out. And this is a high precision CV out that could be used to control another VCO or another on another Eurac system or to control one volt Proctave input of the filter, which is what it's mostly designed for. So I'll take the envelope off. You hear the sound get brighter according to what keys are pressed on the keyboard. So if I turn off all the audio going into the filter, I can then play it like a VCO. 